everyone. Welcome to Five More Minutes, the show where two friends relive their childhoods, or in some cases, learn about everything they missed out on. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. And I'm Kendra. And I'm Scott. Um, but how you doing? Starring Matt LeBlanc nine times. That's a lot of Matt LeBlancs. Mm-hmm. I don't know who made this, but I <laughs> applaud them. I particularly like the the face at the bottom in the middle. That's a good one. This one? In the yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Yeah, yeah, I like this one. Oh yeah. His uh yeah. with his sweet hair. Uh-huh. Um oh, yeah. No, uh, careful. All right, well, this is our second recording of the day, so Kendra needed to get a little wild. She needed to let it out, you know. You can't control this. So wild. Wow. Yeah. Don't put me in a box. <laughs> what? I, I would never, <laughs> I would never put you in a box. Oh, well, um, if this episode, I guess is technically coming out on Thanksgiving since we're recording in advance, we probably could have taken the week off, but then we would have missed our movie day. And since True. we did our mini sode, it messed it up. So now you don't get the movies again. That's all right. But but it just keeps ending up with me doing all the movies, and I don't <laughs> I don't really know why. Yeah, it um, works out. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so happy Thanksgiving, I guess. Yeah, you know, be thankful and stuff. Woo. Um, and um, when this comes out, I'll be in a different place. Um, and in the next episode, I might have like a you know more more podcast studio vibe. Yeah, but there you probably go. not because we don't make money for this, so we really shouldn't. Yeah, I've probably already already spent more money than I should on this podcast. We're not making any money, but it's fine. You'll have a whole extra room, though. I'll have two whole extra rooms. Yeah, and a basement. That? Woo! Yeah. Um, and maybe you know we're partying or something. I don't know. Heck yeah! Party in the basement. <laughs> the guy, the real the realtor guy, the real estate agent guy. Mm-hmm. whatever because it's through a, a realtor company he was like i guess you could like turn this into some like like movie room and put like a projector on the wall and i was like yeah but it's not super awesome down here it's like just cement with that glaze on it yeah but like it has a like a concrete. weird like concrete like counter almost that goes like the whole length and apparently a lot of the older houses in richland have those and i wonder if it's some sort of like foundational or like in case it the water to like keep the like a structural thing huh um i don't know it's really weird i'll have to see it to know what you're talking about i guess yeah it's it's basically like if there was a concrete block counter across the whole front of the house it's just Hmm. like a shelf of concrete that's like counter or like desk height like three less than three feet two and a half feet oh okay yeah but the ceiling's really low like there's two rooms in there and one of them has a sink and the washer washing machine and the dryer. And then there's like a small step up, a like a six inch step up or something. And like the guy, his like head was touching. The <laughs> thing. Like I was like, Oh, this is weird. I can touch the ceiling with like a lot of space. And then he was just like, yeah. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> like, uh, you're, you're, he was probably like our age. Um, mm. But uh, he was like, this is the only one of these I've been in where there's been this weird step. And I was like, all right. So that's pretty weird. Um, brush your hair against the top (laughs) yeah but i guess i might turn that into my dice crafting space i'm not sure oh there you go yeah um but yeah i gotta figure out how to like decorate and what to spend money on and what not to spend money on and all sorts of stuff you know so exciting Mm -hmm. i mean it's not like it's the first time i've moved but it is the first time i'm living by myself so yeah like in your own place yeah um that's probably more expensive than some house payments, but that's fine. <laughs> well, it looks pretty nice. Yeah, it's been like redone on the inside. I was a little worried that it hadn't been since there were no pictures in the listing. Yeah. But I think they just hadn't been able to go in and get pictures since it was still occupied. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And I wonder if they just had like lost the images or maybe the renters had lived there for a while. So they just didn't have like updated ones or something. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, the yard. Doesn't look super great, but I guess that's fun. Yeah, that's uh, par for the course sometimes. Yeah, I'll have to maybe try to make it a little bit better so that it's not gross for my dog. But True. 
yeah so i got lots of space and the bathroom is pretty small so that's unfortunate but oh well <laughs> and there's only one bathroom and it's up, upstairs in the second story oh uh, you got to take a hike yeah and if i have people over there's no downstairs bathroom mm-hmm. so now the bathroom has to like always be clean it's a tough time we yeah. only have one bathroom too yeah i mean i know it's rough but your bathroom has got more space in it yeah it's not too bad for you know what it is but i'm just saying when we do have people over it does kind of start to become a choke point yeah it wasn't that bad except for that i mean it's not usually that bad except for that one weekend we, where we were all there it was a little yeah not ideal yeah would you get like six or seven people in a house yeah um but yeah, um, Scott and I, I guess, had some miscommunication about what this episode was on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I checked because I actually I popped into the episode thing to make my folder. And then I saw your said Dune and I was like, I thought that was next week. And then that's why I texted you. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just like, why is he asking? Did he not watch the movie? And then you like didn't. And, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was you were like, you didn't say that. And I was like. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but I took it as like the episode after we were done with the day. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. I was in my head. I was like, oh, this is short notice for me to come up with an episode and it's going to be the last Thursday. So we should just watch the movie because it'll be easy. So because I was still on like the potential of you doing like the little Call of Duty cinematic thing. Yeah, what I was thinking. Which I guess technically it was a cinematic thing, so it could have been a movie, but. You know? Future episode, but we got there. I got it watched, yeah. and it is super fresh in my mind because I just watched it. Well, I watched it one and a half times because I started <laughs> on, I started it on Friday, but I was like, I was on the computer because I was typing my notes while I was watching it. Mm-hmm. But then I keep getting distracted with needing to buy things for my place that I'm moving into, and so I was like, you know what? I think I'm just like too tired from like work that I need to like watch this on like Saturday. Yeah. Because I just like wasn't. So I started it again yesterday, like 745 while I was drinking my coffee. And then I oh, took yeah. a pause and I like 745 in the morning and mm-hmm. and made breakfast. And then I finished it like right before 11. And then I almost fell asleep and I was like, I need to do something. <laughs> and like this morning, I didn't get up until 830. It really threw me off because I wanted to, well, I was going to hike Badger, but then when we did, were, ended up watching a movie, I was like, well, I'm not going to do that, I guess, probably, but I should still get up early and go to the grocery store. So I went to the grocery store like an hour and a half later than I wanted to. And then I didn't realize I actually had more to grade than I thought because I thought less students turned their work in. But, <laughs> um, um, but I got it done. Yay. But I like never take days off from stuff. Like last night on the Discord, they were like, "Why do you do so much stuff on Saturday?" And I was like, "I don't know. I don't know how to not." Yeah, I mean, you're productive. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I the whole point of that story was that I figured since the new Dune movie came out, we should do our follow up while it was still on HBO Max. Yeah. Um. You know. Do a little compare and contrast and uh, talk about it and stuff. Do a little doom. Yeah. And uh, obviously the real one does not star Matt LeBlanc in all <laughs> roles. But if it did, be it would cool. be a, a really interesting movie. And I can't say that I wouldn't pay to watch that. So Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah. Oh, there's the real maybe characters. once I have everything set up in a in its own separate room, I'll get better at doing the green screen thing. Mm. Um, but I don't usually look at what you're talking about beforehand, but I can figure it out on the fly. Yeah. With the number 23 one, I was finding some of the images while you were talking because I was like, oh, I should have found that and I didn't. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. But I did have like six <laughs> yeah. downloaded before that. So <laughs> you were ready. Uh, it's pretty fun. We just got to get you a green screen, you know? Yeah. Got to get some conversion. And a ring light. Yeah, I probably could use some different setups in here. This little baby does wonders, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonders. Oh, yeah. It's I'm like pale, the... That's fine. Put some makeup on. <laughs> oh, okay. Just Spray not tan. Cheyenne's because it would make you pale. That's true. You got to get that kind that makes you have a little bit of like a summer glow. 
or maybe mm. some like moisturizer with tint in it. Oh, okay. That's a thing I've never bought. Um, but I probably should because I have dry skin. Ah, my skin's pretty dry too. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I guess we can start talking about the the film here. About the um, doom. So uh this is part one and it was labeled part one. So I'm assuming that means they're planning on making the rest of them. And I feel like now part of your Christmas present should be the book and I should also buy it for myself and then we can read the book and oh, do, do an episode on that. So we're, we're just really, and I think there's like a mini series or something. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like I remember seeing that when I was looking it up the first time. Dune mini series. Uh, yeah. It came out in 2000. It's a three part mini series on politics, betrayal, lust, greed, and the coming of a Messiah. Ooh. Um, but I don't know where we would find that or if it's available for streaming or if we'd have to, it looks like there's DVD versions of it, which I guess wouldn't be too hard. Um, yeah. I think it's on prime. Maybe. Oh, nice. Uh, all this Dune action. But yeah, it's got William Hurt in it. I don't know. His name is really familiar. And I think he's like a famous person. <laughs> Um, it also has so Julie, <laughs> Julie Cox. No, but I like I'll click on it. This is off topic. We're not talking about this. Um, <laughs> We're getting sidetracked today. Altered State. I feel like I've heard of that. Is that a horror movie? We should watch that. Altered State. Altered, no Altered idea. States. The okay. Well, I'm really getting off topic, but it yeah. has like a human body with like a bunch of little like diodes attached to it. Oh. What those are called? A psycho, things, yeah. Yeah, a psycho physiologist experiments with drugs on a sensory deprivation tank and has visions he believes are genetic memories. Um, I know this guy's name, William Hurt. He's been in, oh, he he plays Secretary of State Thaddeus Ross in the Avengers movies. Um, he's in the Beowulf show TV series. Beowulf. Um he's been in a lot of stuff. He's um general ross or whatever and like all the avenger stuff um the legend of sasquatch why haven't we watched that anyways right i think he's around. like a famous guy he's pretty old is he still alive yeah um okay wow i got off topic really fast the legend <laughs> of sasquatch is a little kid movie oh. with um with a weird here hold on Hold on. Hold, please. Do you see it? Yeah. <laughs> it That's weird. It does not look like Sasquatch to me. That is a... <laughs> I don't even know what I would call it, that. It looks like one of the McDonald's mascot guys. Yeah, a little it bit. looks like a goofy wombat i don't know yeah i don't and her hair matches it i think that's probably supposed to be like that her hair is like um, the freaking she looks like that lady out of the incredibles that designs the super suits oh yeah from the back <laughs> yeah. yeah um and it takes place in washington state and ranger steve is in it he's a character so i mean rated 4.4 out of 10 don't miss out on this one it only has 134 ratings so that's not bad um but anyways, we don't need to talk about that. Anyways. Um, I made that. <laughs> is it too soon to say Kobe or can we say that again? I think I think in his honor. Okay. Yeah. Kobe. Sweet. All right. Anyways, so this movie came out October 22nd, 2021, which was less than a month ago. Um, it came out in theaters and it is streaming on HBO Max. I don't know if it's streaming anywhere else, but if you have HBO Max, you can watch it for free. Yeah. Um, I kind of keep forgetting that, like, I like going to movies too. And I kind of keep forgetting that I can do that because it was so long when I couldn't like the movie theaters were closed for like a while. Oh yeah. A long time. Um, but every time I drive, at least the Pasco theater, like even last night, cause I was, I went to Taco Bell after I left your, um, parents' house and I mm-hmm. was going to go to the one on road 68, but the line was like all the way into the parking lot. So I went to court street, but I drove back around behind yokes to exit. Oh There's yeah. There's like no cars in the parking lot, even though it's Friday. And yeah. I wonder how the Richland and the new one are doing. Because there were definitely some days when I was working there where it wasn't busy and it probably should have been. But like literally like 20 cars 
in the parking lot on a Friday yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, the yeah. shift that this has had on movies, they probably took one of the biggest hits. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, so I don't really know how that's affecting like the the money numbers, but we can see, I guess. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of soon. So like the budget was still estimated and stuff, but it said the estimated budget was 165,000. Um, and I meant, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I meant, wait, hold on. Now I'm confused. Did I write the right number down? There's no shot they did uh, this yeah. for under 200 grand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wrote the number down wrong because I put 165K, but in my mind it was 165,000. Um, let's actually compare that to the, I think it was like 45 million or something. Of the original? Yeah. Um, let's see. Where's that? 165 million, though. That's a lot of moolah. Because they need it for oh, all that. Uh, yeah, effects. 40 million budget was what the first one was in the 80s. So I guess gotcha. with inflation, that's probably not actually as different. 1980. Because that was probably pretty expensive for a 1980s movie, I imagine. Yeah. Here, I'm going to calculate it. Well, I'm oh. really getting off. Inflation calculator. You saw it here first. Uh, 40 million in 1980. Well, we'll just do 1980 because. Okay, 40. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Um, Converted amount, <clears throat> 125 million. So it's not that yeah, different. Not too far off. Look at that. So many millions of dollars. All right. Anyways, this is going to be an episode where we get off topic a lot, I guess. <laughs> um, so the opening weekend, it made 41 million, which again, mm. um, probably not as high as it would be because you can stream it online. Yeah. But it's still pretty good, I think, at least given the, that how the movies are now. Um, but a lot of that, I didn't put this in my notes, but a lot of that was um, like non. So like uh, here, I'll have this here. So so like the gross worldwide so far for box mm-hmm. office is three hundred and fifty one million. But the U.S. and Canada number is only ninety three million. Oh, okay. So a large portion of that is people in other countries where maybe it's not necessarily streaming. and. I don't know. I guess, I guess if it's a service where you pay to watch the movie, they're still making money because there are some places where you can pay like twenty bucks or whatever. I think and watch the movie. Yeah. Um, but like, if you have something like HBO Max, some of these movies are included. So I don't really know how all they of that is working. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like we mentioned before, this is based on Frank Herbert's. Um series that has i believe five books um and that is episode 14 if you haven't listened to it yet um we talk about the original um and you know um that one came out in 1984 so a good 37 years before this one so a lot of time in between um the book came out in 1965 uh just as a long overall timeline yeah so the Warner Brothers storyline that's listed on um, IMDb reads, A mythic and emotionally charged hero's journey, Dune tells the story of Paul Atreides, a brilliant and gifted young man born into a great destiny beyond his understanding, who must travel to the most dangerous planet in the universe to ensure the future of his family and his people. As malevolent forces explode into conflict over the planet's exclusive supply of the most precious resource in existence, a commodity capable of unlocking humanity's greatest potential, only those who can conquer their fear will survive. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, the you know, that's what Warner Bros. is putting out there. Okay. Um, we'll jump into the crew and the cast real quick. So it is directed by Dennis Villanueva, um, oh. who had a lot of stuff I didn't recognize, but he did have a couple of big name things. So Prisoners, which I haven't seen, but it has Hugh Jackman. So I feel like it's got to be a pretty decent movie. Okay. Um, Sicario, which I've also never seen, but I know that people Good like movie. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the Blade Runner 2049. He'd also directed that. Okay. Yeah. So 
in the more recent years, some big name things. Um, it was written by three people. Um, one of those is the director, Dennis Villanueva. The other is Eric Roth, whose only thing that really stood out was Forrest Gump. But I guess if you write Forrest Gump, then you probably don't really need to do much else. So You get kind of a pass, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then John Spites. I think that's how you say your name, sir. Um, who also had a lot of stuff I didn't really recognize. Um, but he also was one of the writers for Prometheus, which I also haven't seen, but I know that that's a thing people watch. Yep. Um, and Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, everyone loves a Benedingle. A Benedingle. All right, so a lot of the cast had been in a lot of things that I also hadn't really seen. Um, but playing Paul Atreides, Mm-hmm. Um, you had Timothy with two E's, Chalamet. Um, Chalamet. And he was in Hot Summer Nights and Interstellar. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson, who plays Jessica. Mm. Uh, she has in, been in the newest few Mission Impossible movies and The Greatest Showman. Um, Oscar Isaac, who plays Duke Leto, was in Star Wars. Uh, He plays Mm Poe, and even though I watched all those last year, I don't really remember who that is, (laughs) but he did look really familiar, so. Yeah. Um, And then playing uh, Baron Harkonnen, who I must add doesn't look quite as scary in this one. That's true. um, Is played by Stellan Skarsgård, who is the father of the Skarsgård bros. Yeah, and he's Boopstrap Bill in Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah, I did see that. I didn't write it down, though. Um, he has 150 acting credits and there was a lot, so I didn't write anything down, but like he's in Goodwill Hunting, which I also haven't seen. He's in Mamma Mia. Um, I think he might be like the love interest. I've seen that, but I don't really remember. Um, he's in Chernobyl, which I meant to watch and never watched. Mm. Um, he's in a lot of stuff. He plays Selvig in the Avengers. I don't actually really remember who that is. He's the main professor in like Thor. Yeah, that's the same guy, Eric Selby. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember, though. It's been a long time since I watched the older ones. Um, But yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff. A lot of good stuff. He's got a wild voice, too. Yeah, his first acting thing was in uh, 1968. Nice. And he played Bombi Bit in Bombi Bit Akshag. And I think that might might be like, uh, which country is he from? Uh, Sweden? Yeah. I think that might be like a Swedish show because it's not in English. Yeah, I would. Um, but yeah, so for all you It fans out there, uh, <laughs> this is Daddy It, you know. Whoa. Um, but yeah, a lot of these early things are like mostly Swedish because the titles are weird. Um. Anyways, um. So then we've got Jason Momoa who plays oh, Duncan. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't have his like normal like Jason Momoa beard. Um, he does for part of it. Yeah, but it's not quite the same. Yeah. Um, so he, Duncan Idaho. Um, he's Aquaman. He's in Game of Thrones. And I did not know this, but his very first acting credit was two seasons of Baywatch. Oh, really? Yeah, 1999 hmm. to 2001. And I guess okay. you know if you look at the his body, that makes sense. He's a he's a swimmer, dude. Yeah, he's out there shirtless saving all those girls and stuff. Heck yeah. Um, and then you got Josh Brolin, who plays Gurney. Um, and I did not know that Josh Brolin was Thanos, but you apparently didn't? no. <laughs> of course, yeah. I like read through that and I was like, oh. Um, <laughs> but there's this episode of Friends where Rachel's pregnant, but no one knows but Phoebe. So, but she doesn't want to tell people. So Phoebe's pretending that she's pregnant because they know mm. one of them is pregnant, but they don't know who. Yeah. And she says that Josh Brolin is the um, dad. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, wait. Is there someone named James Brolin? Maybe that's who she says. I don't know. It's Phoebe. So um, anyways, um, he's also in Sicario and American Gangster, which I kind of forgot existed until I read it in that. Um, and then you've got Javier Bardem. How do you say that? Bardem. Bardem. He plays Stilgar, who is um, the main Fremen person. That's Are right. they Fremen even... or Fremen? 
They said Fremen all okay. this show. So um, yeah, I kept being like, that guy looks really familiar. Who mm-hmm. is he? And then when I looked it up, I was like, ah, oh, all right. Um, so he is in a lot of things also, I think, but such things as No Country for, for Old Men and Skyfall. Oh, the other day I was looking at movies and theaters because I kind of wanted to go to one. And that's when I saw that Dune was in there. And that's kind of what sparked this idea. Yeah. Um, but then I also saw that the newest James Bond movie was out. And I forgot that that was even a thing. I hear it's really good, too. Yeah. Got to watch that. I wonder if that's streaming anywhere. Um, and then you have Dave Bautista. Who oh, yeah. plays Beast Robin Harkonnen. And I was literally like, why does he look like the Guardians of the Galaxy guy? And then I was like, I, this is the same guy, you can tell. Yeah. But I was like, why does he look exactly like him? Like, he looks exactly like Drax, almost. Like, He's there's the same v- guy. virtually, yeah, but like, they're like, they look the same. Well, you, they didn't put like <laughs> prosthetics on him for Drax, they just did makeup. <laughs> yeah, but like, it bothered me. It's his face. Because the whole time I was like, why is this a crossover? You know, and it's taking what? place in space. So, like, it could be him, you know, it could be Drax. Okay. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I wrote it bothered me how similar he looked, even though that is. Yeah. Literally- Why doesn't he change his dang face? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously you had Zendaya who plays Chani. I think it's Zendaya, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and I knew that. Um, but I apparently I lose my ability to think um in here that's fine. once once the camera's rolling uh, and everyone knows who zendaya is so um but you know she does the musical stuff right she has songs yeah. um she's also in the greatest showman spider-man homecoming and this show called euphoria which i watched the first season of it's about it's about like real life teen stuff like today's world it's actually oh. pretty good it's a little bit like dark and like social like, media problems on, like, kind of yeah anyways um so I thought we could talk about some similarities and differences and then we can do a little bit of reviews and then just a little bit of commentary or whatever the commentary can be during the similarities and differences. And then we'll just do the reviews at the end. Okay. Um, and then I'm mixing it up a little bit at the end with the quiz. So you'll see. Oh, snap. Um, so both movies start out with a monologue. However, True. the monologues are different. So in this one, um, there was also something called dreams or mess or called it said dreams or messages from the deep. This was in a different voice than the rest of the monologue, though, I think. Mm-hmm. And it was also before the Warner Brothers intro, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, yeah, it was. Which I was like, wait, what? Because I thought um, it was an ad at yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the rest of the monologue is voiced by Chani rather than Princess Irulan. Um, and if you will, I would like to reread the opening scene from the original Dune. Oh, good. And then read um, Chani's uh, monologue. Sounds so, good. This is the original. I'm going to try to do it in my best impersonation voice again. Should I? Oh, I can't my wait. Color? Oh. No, it doesn't really work. No. Nah. Okay. <clears throat> a beginning is a very delicate time. Know then that it is the year 10,191. The known universe is ruled by the Padashi Emperor Shaddam IV. My father. In this time, the most precious substance in the universe is the spice melange. The spice extends life. The spice expands consciousness. The spice is vital to space travel. The spacing guild and its navigators, who the spice has mutated over 4,000 years. I lost my spot. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was just trying to see who was here because my dog is out in the yard, but I think it's just my sister, so it should be fine. Okay. Um, so I like looked away from the computer for a second. Use the orange spice gas, which gives them the ability to fold space. That is, travel to any part of the universe without moving. Oh yes, I forgot get to tell you. The spice exists on only one planet in the entire universe. A desolate, dry planet with vast deserts. Hidden away within the rocks of these deserts are a people known as the Fremen, who have long held a prophecy that a man would come, a Messiah, who would lead them to the true freedom. The planet is Arrakis, also known as Dune. Dune. Okay, so this new monologue is about half as long. Yeah. And a little bit less awkward. Um, 
My planet, Arrakis, is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over the sands, you can see spice in the air. At nightfall, the spice harvesters land. The outsiders race against time to avoid the heat of the day. They ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. These outsiders, the Harkonnens, came long before I was born. By controlling the spice production, they became obscenely rich, richer than the emperor himself. Our warriors couldn't free Arrakis from the Harkonnens. You, you good? Yeah, my dog was barking. <laughs> okay. Um, but one day, by imperial decree, they were gone. Why did the emperor choose this path? And who... I think this is missing a word. And who will our next oppressors be? Uh, makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, so a lot different, a lot less awkward. Um, yes. There was like real things going on while that monologue was going on going on instead of like the weird space thing <laughs> yeah um yeah a lot more short sweet to the point mm-hmm. more, much more bearable yes i agree um all right so i actually found like a buzzfeed article that has 27 differences and they all looked good so i just figured that was easier than me typing everything that i noticed out yeah mm-hmm. so i figured we could start here um, and then if there's anything else we want to talk about, we can do that. Sounds good. I'm going to go see what's going on over here really quickly. Okay. Uh, her chair covered Jason Momoa's face. I really wanted to look at it. Shame. Who else is it covering up? Man. Poor placement. You got Josh Brolin. He's looking pretty good. Grizzled. The guy wears a beard pretty well. But anyway, how are you guys doing? I'm just kind of chilling. I'm pretending a wrangler dog and possibly a human. Come back and he's got someone roasting on a spit in the front yard. Never really know what's going on over there. I hear they're wild animals, but I have no proof. I can't bring it to the police or anything. It's not really my place either. I kind of mind my own business. But we'll see what the future holds. Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Kind of what I think about it. That way I, I won't be the one that gets damaged. But are you talking you about? What? What are you saying? Are you talking smack? No. I don't talk smack. Yeah, you do. You call me out all the time, like the other day when I was texting you. Oh, so called out, but your chair hid Jason Momoa's face for me, and I was kind of sad. Oh, no. I know. All right. So, uh, the first thing that this BuzzFeed article, which is written by Evelina Zaragoza Medina. That's the name. um, Is that the inner monologue for the major characters is gone. Yeah, I did notice that. Um, And I thought that that was much more enjoyable um, because it really bothered me. (laughs) Yeah. In the the first one, I didn't like it. Um, It was very overkill in the first one. It was like way too much monologue in the head. Yeah. And with like the, with the power, like the magic voice and then the inner monologue and then the regular speaking, I feel like it was like a lot going on. Yeah. Um, And And this person points out that hearing every single thought the characters had was unnecessary exposition and ultimately disrupted the action, which is true. I agree. Um, All right. So even though narration is nowhere near as prominent in Villanueva's movie, there is still an opening narration. um, But this time it's delivered by Chani instead of Princess Irulan, uh, which we already talked about. Um, Much more enjoyable. Um. Oh, and apparently that that opening monologue is one of Paul's dreams, which I don't think I realized when I was watching it. Oh, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, rather than Princess Irulan, who really does nothing in the movie. No, nothing like except that at she's all. the emperor's daughter. That's like I feel like the only thing. Was she even in this one? I don't think so. 
I don't. I didn't remember seeing her either. You yeah, saw the there Emperor there were some things that were different, and I think they're maybe on this list. But um, the Emperor is actually not not even in it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and, when they come and um, arrive, it's the neither Atreides. neither is the little sister. Because um, they ended yeah. it. They ended it differently. Um. So in the 1984 movie, the Atreides family had a little pug, which I don't even think I noticed because I disliked the movie so much. Um, but in this one, they had little desert mice, so they kept some adorableness um, by throwing in those desert mice with the big ears. Get the little mice. Um, Paul has a closer relationship with both his parents in the 2021 film, which is demonstrated by some extra scenes that weren't in the original. Um, so there was the one scene, I actually made a note of this, this is in the article. Um, where am I during the movie notes? I didn't open them. Um, but there was one one scene where they were walking by all these like tombs in a field. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that. Um, I was like, oh, they're having a little heart to heart with all these dead people. <laughs> um, Touching. But yeah, it did seem like, especially with his dad, the relationship was better um, than it was yeah. in the first one. So. Yeah, they they took some time to create that bond a little better in this one. Yeah, and I was still a little confused by like the the one lady testing him, um, but it did seem like the mom cared more or like showed more emotion or yeah. something than in the first one. Um, yeah, in the first one it was almost like, well, if he dies, he dies. This is kind of what he's for. And in this yeah. one, she was like visibly upset. Um, and point five. Speaking of Paul's parents, Lady Jessica is an absolute badass now. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, <clears throat> so she, see, that's what I was doing in the last one. I kept coughing. Uh, um, so she's more powerful, aggressive, and straight up cool. Straight up. Yeah, she's a real G. Damn. Uh, this person believes that the 2021 movie is slightly funnier, um, and that two of the jokes came from Jason Momoa. Probably the muscle one had to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the other one was. But it was there. Yeah. Um, number seven, thankfully, Baron Harkonnen looks different. He <laughs> uh, was a little more tolerable. They yeah, still made he, him look he pretty good. Didn't have all of the weird, like bubbly skin warts, yeah. though, so that's nice. Yes, um, I actually feel like it made him a little bit less creepy. Um, he kind of reminded me of Dr. Evil or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah, just I think because he was bald. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> did Dave Batista remind you of Dr. Evil then? No, he reminded me of Drex. Oh, but he's bald. <laughs> um, oh, apparently the name pronunciation is different. So in 1984, it was Harkonnen. And in 2021, it's Harkonnen. Oh, make it roll off the tongue a little easier. Yeah. Um, Dr. Wellington Yu is played by Taiwanese actor Cheng Chen. Mm -hmm. um, and in the 1984 movie and the 2000, even though the name Yu is Chinese, the character was white in both of those. Oh. And he seemed to have much less of a role in this new one than the old ones. Well, he still betrayed them. Yeah, but like early on in the 84 one, he was like always with the other guys you know he was like always present and in this one he was just kind of there for that part only that's true he did was he he gave like paul like a warning did he do that in the first one too i couldn't remember um you mean the little message thing well, he gave warning? him like a warning or like a message or something when he was checking him out he like whispered something that like paul's mom couldn't hear oh i don't remember yeah it was kind of weird um so the 2021 movie uses a different languages um while the 1984 movie only uses english so dr Yu and paul speak mandarin to each other jessica uses a type of sign language and the fremen use a language called chakobsa mm. um stilgar shows up much earlier um i i think i was really confused during the movie because i was like different things are happening yeah and, like, it i was, was confused during the first movie so then i was trying to like compare it and i was like this is not the same yeah um, and this person says we should all be thankful for because he is played by Javier Javier Bardem. Oh yeah. Um, so he comes to visit the Atreides, 
when they moved to Arcanin instead of showing up for the first time near the end. They moved to where? They're on. Yeah, they're. Uh, I think this person wrote it wrong. Okay. They go to Arrakis, which is also. Yeah. Deep. Okay. Maybe maybe the city is named Ar- Arakeen, and we just don't know that or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, could be. Um, the 2021 version emphasizes the harsh conditions on Arrakis and how much the Atreides have to adapt when they get there. Um, so it was made clear it was a desert planet, but there's um, much more emphasis put on how dangerous it is without like the suit mm-hmm. and like the water and all that. Because a bunch of that part, like once they're in the plane and then they escape, I feel like a lot of that is significantly different. Yeah, the, and the rest of it, and so mm. I feel like there was more emphasis on that, and like needing the water from the bodies and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, Doctor Liet Kines Kines is a woman in the new movie, portrayed by Sharon Duncan Brewster, um, rather than a man. So mm-hmm. making big strides. Woo. Um, her death plays out differently than in the original movie. Yeah. So in the original movie, she was killed by the Harkonnens. And in this movie, she sacrifices herself to give Paul and Jessica time to escape the Sardaukar, Sardaukar, Sardaukar um, army. But she does this by summoning the sandworm to come eat her and the Sar- Sardaukar around her. Oh, yeah. um, number 15, the quality of the CGI is drastically improved. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, it looks much more realistic and expansive. I mean, you you could just say it's 40 years in the future as well. Yeah. (laughs) Um, This person does say that the 1984 movie was pretty good for the time it was made. Yeah. Um, Paul's visions are very different. Um, She says, my apologies to Lynch, but I did not understand Paul's visions in the 1984 movie at all. They are full of metaphors and symbolism that without the necessary context of the book were more confusing than explanatory. Um, And that Villanueva's take on the visions was more literal and showed actual events and conversations that Paul might experience in the future. And the visions and dreams make up about 80% of Zendaya's screen time. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think I might have, like, not even realized when some of them were dreams. (laughs) Well, I was a little caught back because I think the point of a lot of the dreams he was having was, hey, this is how it's going to happen unless you act differently because Mm -hmm. like, you know, it showed him as the one um, being stabbed in that fight, but then he was able to turn around because he knew that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times his visions were not actually what happened in the movie. Yeah. Um, And. I forget. Oh, they were, they seemed less weird and sexual because I feel like there was a lot of weird (laughs) sexual stuff in the first one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. With his little like sultry voice when he's talking about the spikes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that especially. Mm-hmm. Um, Duncan Idaho has a much bigger role this time around. Um, in 1984, Duncan had a close relationship with Paul, but Momoa and Timothy Shamalet have great chemistry and more scenes together that really cement the bond between the characters. Duncan also died earlier in the 1984 version, but in this movie, he survived the attack on. I think this person just wrote the thing wrong on Arrakis and saved Paul and Jessica in the desert before going out in a sacrificial blaze of glory against the Sardaukar. I honestly locks himself in a hallway. Yeah, I honestly couldn't even remember in the original how he died because he had such a small part. It's because in the original they have that really big fight. Yeah, and And he just dies in the fight. And they didn't really do that in this one, did they? Not really. Yeah. Um. And no one does a battle cry quite like Momoa. And Duncan's final moments gave her chills. Mm, um, the, new, the new movie has more combat scenes. Like more intense, like, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leto's death scene follows the same plot as the original movie, but is different visually. Um, so in 1984, Leto is paralyzed and strapped to a gurney while Baron Harkonnen gloated over him. He then released poison gas that he was hiding in a fake tooth, which only wounded Harkonnen, but killed Leto himself. Um, And this is what happens in the 2021 movie, except that Leto is naked and seated at his own table, surrounded by Harkonnens, who had just infiltrated his house, and he manages to kill all of them but the Baron with his poisoned tooth. 
Yeah, that was a big that was a big kill radius on that one. Yeah. Um, but it also says it says that the scene really illustrates just how badly he had been defeated. Oh, sure. Um, Paul and Jessica spend a much longer time lost in the desert after escaping a, a racking and work together to survive. Um, I didn't notice so, that was a big difference because in the original one, it's like right after they crashed, they like found the Fremen. Yeah. It was like instant. Um, and the other difference is that Jessica in the first one, original one is really hysterical over Leto's death, but they both kind of seem to be keeping it together pretty well. Yeah. Um, in this one, and they have that scene where like they they're both fighting because they're like, oh well, you're important, but she's not, because they don't know that she's like a trained fighter or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Jessica and Paul are not immediately accepted by the Fremen, and Paul must fight a duel to the death before they are able to join them. So in the 1984 movie, they were accepted right away. However, mm-hmm. there was apparently a deleted scene in which Paul fought and killed Jamis, just as happens in the 2021 version. Oh, interesting. Um, and apparently there are a lot of deleted scenes for the 1984 movie on YouTube. Oh, okay. Including a completely different ending. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like in the first or original version, there's much more of the, oh, you are the Messiah. And in this one, they're like, nah, you're not the Messiah. That's true. They were like very sure. Everyone was sure except him in Mm -hmm. the first one. And in this one, they're like, yeah, you're right. You're probably not the guy. Yeah. Uh, Number 22, Zendaya is only in seven minutes of Dune. Did I say it wrong again? No, you were good that time. Okay. Um, And I know we're all upset about it, but her character is already doing more than she did in 1984. That is true. Yeah. And she really has that like look, you know? The look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there are a few characters from the 84 movie that aren't in 2021, including the Emperor and Aaliyah Atreides, which I already mentioned. Um, Princess Ar- Arulan and F- Foyd Ratha, who was played by Sting, are not in this movie. Oh, that's right. Um, and she thinks that the most of the people who weren't in this one are likely to show up in the second one. But that's her assumption because they're important to the book. Oh, OK. Fair enough. Uh, number 24, the sleeper has awakened was an oft repeated line in the original movie. But nobody says it once in the 2021 movie. Mm, kind of the same with that. And apparently it's though. not in the novel. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, Paul is resentful of the Bene Gesserit. Prophecy. Is that how you say that? I always forget. Ben A. Jesuit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and even lashes out at Jessica because of it, which didn't happen in the 1984 movie. Yeah, in the in the old one, he kind of just accepted it. And this one he was kind of like, You guys messed me up, dude. Yeah. Um, in the 1984 movie, he was worried that he wouldn't live up to his prophecy. Um, but this version of the character dismisses the prophecy as a myth and doesn't believe in it until the very end of the movie. Yeah. Number 26, the plot of both movies is actually really similar until the ending. So in the 1984 version, there is a two-year time jump. Um, during this time, Aaliyah is born. Jessica becomes the reverend mother of the Fremen. Paul and Chani begin their romantic relationship, and Paul drinks the water of life, which was a very dramatic. Very. <laughs> um, which gives him the ability to control the giant sandworms. He then reunites with Gurney and leads the Fremen in a battle against the Harkonnens and the Emperor, during which Aaliyah kills Baron Harkonnen, and Paul defeats the Emperor. Um, on the other hand, the 2021 movie ends when Paul and Jessica join the Fremen. Yeah, I guess when I started watching this either, I didn't know it was just a part one. So when part one popped up, I was like, oh, is there going to be more? Mm-hmm. I didn't and it realize says, they were splitting um, it up. On IMDb that it's expected to come out in 2023. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, let's see. The last one. Finally, Jessica says the fear is the mind killer monologue instead of Paul. Mm. She repeats it like a sort of prayer whenever she's under duress, such as when her son is being tortured or the aircraft she's riding in is crashing into the sea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's the list of similarities and differences. Okay. Um, I don't know what it is. I still had a hard time paying attention. I texted Scott that I think I have a issue with desert space movies. <laughs> and you said Star Wars was the other one. <laughs> yeah, because in some of those, I had a really hard time paying attention to. 
Well, there were some points in this movie that were like kind of slow, um, where not a lot was happening. I guess that's probably part of, you know, it being split into parts now. Um, but it seemed like there were there were definitely slow periods. Yeah, and I don't know if it was just me having a hard time paying attention to the first one or not, but was Paul always studying the Fremen like that? Um, yeah, when he first, uh, in the first one, it was like before they even left, he was like doing studies in the, on the original planet they were on about what they were and how things were. Like, but how they walk and stuff? I think so. See, I think I just had to draw, because I... I had a hard time watching it because it just was bad and confusing to me. Right. Some of the stuff I was like, wait, were they doing this in the first one? Well, you know, that that brought me to an interesting thought in this one, because if I had just watched this new one without watching the old one, I think I also would have been really confused because while the old one was, you know, confusing, it like almost over explained everything. Mm hmm. Um, and this one, they were kind of banking on you already knowing what all their terms were. Like, I don't think, did they ever explain what the Kwisatch Haderach actually was? They just kept calling him that, but they, they never mentioned it's like the super bean or whatever, you know? Yeah, that's true. And there were a yeah. bunch of weird terms like that, that they didn't really totally explain. Mm -hmm. I think I also didn't really realize in the first one that they were like, all those scenes with that interior stuff was that they were actually like on a rackus. Like, I think I knew that, but it didn't like register with me that they were like living in a, Oh yeah. In a place there. Cause I think I was confused because it's like, it's like they want to like take the spice, but the Fremen live there. And then they have like access to this like building. Like where did they get that access from? Well, the way I understand it is that the emperor appoints whatever house is currently ruling over Arrakis. So he took the, the it was the Harkonnen for a long time. And then the emperor is like, OK, you guys are done. Um, Atreides, the house Atreides is going to take over this planet and the mining operation now. It's almost like a contractor. He's like, you go there. You're going to be in charge now. Um, they don't really deal with the Fremen at all. The Fremen just have the misfortune of living on this planet. So they kind of just leave them alone. Um, the Harkonnen are like super violent to them and kill them. But when Atreides come, obviously they're like, you know, the Fremen are people. We're not going to harm them. We're just going to take the spice and get it out of here. It's almost just like they're hired by the emperor to make money by selling the spice. And it was like under new ownership now. So because there was a lot of times in the movie where uh, Duke Leto was like, you know, the Harkonnen has left this place in disarray. Like we can't meet our goals because they left us trash. And basically, he's like indicating, you know, this is all the same facilities they were using, but they trashed it, didn't take care of it. And now he's stuck with trying to fix everything. You know what I mean? I see. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we need to have our friends watch it who haven't watched the first one and see what they think. Because you're right. Like, I, I feel like I did know some things because I had seen the first one. And oh, the other thing they didn't mention one time was like, I guess they did mention the word weirding. But you remember how like focused the first one was on the weirding modules, like right at the beginning. Oh yeah, and they like didn't a lot even of, like technical information. Yeah, they didn't even mention that until until Jessica fought with that guy, and she, he's like, "You didn't tell me you were a weirding warrior or whatever." And mm -hmm. it was like that was the first time they said weirding. Yeah, this is true. So there was because we wouldn't have known about those weird ass shields that much unless we had seen the first one. Yeah, and the shields looked a lot better. Yeah. I mean, they did a good job of mentioning, like, you know, the slow blade pierces it or whatever, but otherwise you're just kind of like, okay, it's just this weird thing. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if they'll hit on it more in part two, because wasn't that a big thing of them accepting Paul into the Fremen was that he would teach them the weirding ways or whatever? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Well, let's do the reviews because I we got to have time to do the stuff. I'm mixing it up with at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um. So so far on IMDb, it has an 8.2 out of 10, um, with okay. 317,000 reviews. This is a refresher. The first one has a 6.4 out of 10 with only 151,000 reviews. Okay. So it's much more liked. Sure. Um, I didn't pick any of these in advance. Um. So. Let's find a good one. 
Villanueva's greatest <clears throat> sci-fi film. It says it has spoilers, but it do I have to click on the permalink? It doesn't have text. Okay. <laughs> spoilers. Um, okay, let's read the four out of a ten because this sounds like an interesting one. Okay. Lifeless, emotionless, and dull. Oh. At the very end of Dune, Dennis Villanueva's attempt to make uh, it might be Denis also because it's just D E N I S. Um, attempt to make a screen version of the novel that isn't a disaster. A character says, this is only the beginning. The line is meant to be an enticing promise of what's yet to come. To me, it sounded like a threat. I knew this was only the first of a two-part movie, and yet this bit of news still managed to be one of the most demoralizing things I've heard in a long time. The creators of Dune clearly love... This is a long review. The creators of Dune clearly love that the source material... Clearly love the source material and have attempted to make something true to it, with much care and love, but they're somehow still managed to make a lifeless, dramatically inert bungle of it. I didn't feel a single thing during this nearly three-hour movie, except the urge to pee, which I knew would happen <laughs> given the size of the modello. I I modello modello. There, wow. I bought at the concession. Seriously, you should have seen this modello. I paid thirteen dollars <laughs> for it, what which was almost <laughs> as much as the amount I paid for the movie ticket and parking combined. At first, I was astounded, but then I saw the can they were handing to me. It was like I got my own personal keg of beer. This is the first time I've ever had a movie end and realized that I still had beer to drink, which I chugged during the closing credits. Wait, did I wander away from the subject of Dune? That's because the story of my beer is more interesting than this movie. (laughs) Have you ever seen the musical You're in Town? If you have, you know that there's a song at the beginning about how the characters don't want to overload the audience with too much exposition right off the bat. The creators of Dune should have watched You're in Town. This movie is nothing but exposition. We have to have someone explaining something to us in every scene. At one point, there's even a five-minute scene where one character literally tells the other characters how their suits work. It's like a mechanic explaining to you how a car engine works when you're not in that into cars. There's an audience for it, but I'm not it. One brown, ponderous scene follows another while Han- Hans Zimmer's screeching score drones on and on. At first, it was just there, but by the end of the movie, the music had me wanting to climb the walls. It becomes a parody of itself. By the time a bunch of female vocalists came on the soundtrack wailing in something resembling a Middle Eastern way, I had decided that this might be one of the worst scores Zimmer has ever composed. The movie never changes tone. I mean, never. It never changes pace. I mean, never. I suppose during some action scenes, the editing literally gets faster, but the scenes still somehow manage to remain lifeless and unexciting. I never felt a sense of adventure, which is odd for a movie about a young man who gets the opportunity to leave his home planet and experience something new. I never cared about anything. None of the actors seem to be having any fun being in this movie. Timothy Shamalit is pretty as a postcard, but he has exactly one facial expression. Oscar Isaac is in this. So is Jason Momoa. So is Josh Brolin. So is Javier Bardem. Lots of good talent. All of it swamped by colorless production design. This is the kind of movie with rabid fans who would tell you that there's something wrong with you for not liking it. I can just hear them saying things like stick to the fast and furious union poops who are too (laughs) stupid to understand such profound things as Dune as if they have any idea who I am or what my movie tastes are like. Let those people get their knickers in a twist and let those who also thought this movie was a boring slog join me for a cake size modello. Cheers. Grade (laughs) C (laughs) minus. Wow, that was quite a review. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one to click on for not having read them in advance. Yeah, you stumbled onto gold there. You use all kinds of weird words like bungle and knicker. I mean, geez. <laughs> There's another four out of 10. Wow. The, for having an 8.6 or whatever, it's really giving me a lot of bad ones. It's called the title Long Overdoon. <laughs> <laughs> Overdoon. Um, Wow. I'm not going to read this whole one, but um, had I known this was only part one, all caps, of what appears to be a five plus hour slow all caps with like 15 O's film, I wouldn't have bothered. Yes, in the opening couple of minutes, it actually does say Dune part one, but I read that just as Justice League's part one of six was in chapters, not actual movies. Um. But there, there are some good IMDb re- reviews. Um, I'm just not reading any of them. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like they probably highlight the bad ones because those are the most fun to read. Yeah. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a tomato meter of 83% and an audience score of 90%, which is really high. 
Yeah. Um, and it has 5,000 plus verified ratings for the audience score. So that's because I would say generally an audience score being like 50% is like good. So I feel like 90% is like actually really good. Yeah. Um, critics consensus. Dune occasionally struggles, struggles with its unwieldy source mm -hmm. material, but those issues are largely overshadowed by the scope and ambition of this visually thrilling adaptation. Audience says, Dennis Villanueva's Dune looks and sounds amazing, and once the admittedly slow-building story gets you hooked, you'll be on the edge of your seat for the sequel. Um, let's see. Let me find a critic review. Critic. Um, Let's see. Everyone's a critic. You having a party over there? My sister was looking at me. Um, um this one's 3.4 out of five. Um, Dennis Villanueva's Sumptuous Dune brings an epic to life, both larger than life and an intellectual achievement. This is actually really long. I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> but, um, but overall positive one. Yeah, overall positive. Um Audience reviews. Let's see. Awesome. The sound was phenomenal. Really impressive representation of Frank Herbert's exceptional world building. Five stars. Five stars. Everyone in Hollywood should take notes. This movie is pure effort. Looks beautiful. Sounds tremendous. Pacing is perfect. Not my favorite actor. Sure, the director brings the best out of everyone. I love when nerdy source material is taken seriously. Sometimes it felt like it could have taken a, bre a bre breather. Jesus. For Dune is serious to start to finish. Nonetheless, I was very entertained. If the Academy has any honor left, this movie should sweep at the Academy Awards. Um, someone named Steve left at five stars, fairly close to the book. These are all recent reviews, also, like within the last two hours. Oh, wow. Um, there is a two out of five from two hours ago by Maria S. Never read the books and have to say that I would much rather read from the beginning than to watch another movie. Thought the actor showed promise, but that is as far as the entertainment goes. According to my husband, this movie's missed the mark and a lot of the important story was lost. The dialogue was very hard to follow, and while the story tried to make sense, it didn't. All right. So, uh, seems like people either like it or they don't. That seems to be the case most of the time. But overall, it seems to be scoring better than the first one. For sure. Um, and I mean, even though we did have like that background information, I also do think it was better. Yeah, I, I agree. And there was slow parts still, but I was overall less confused most of the time. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. We're going to take this spicy dune quiz. A spicy Dune quiz. Yeah, it's a pre-made quiz. I thought it would be more entertaining since we've both already seen the movies. So if you click on start quiz, it just scrolls you down. It's question one of ten. Okay. Okay, we can we'll do it together. Okay. So most of Paul's story unfolds on Arrakis, but he wasn't born there. What's the protagonist's native planet? I actually know this one. Do you know it? Yes. Okay. Did you get it right? Um, how does this work? Hold on, I'm getting pop-ups. Oh. I don't want the newsletter. There we go. Yes, I got it. Yeah, Caladan. Yeah. Apparently, Frank Herbert owned a 40-foot sailboat that he named Caladan after Paul's watery homeworld. He's like, yeah, this book bought me this boat. What's up? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> uh, question two of ten. Who's playing fan favorite Gurney Halleck in Dennis Villanueva's upcoming adaptation of Dune? I also know that one. Yep. Just so you know, audience options are Chris Pratt, who no one likes right now. <laughs> uh, do you know all that? Yeah, the Mario yeah. thing, right? No, like for real world things, no one likes him. Um, I don't. Apparently, because he's married to what's her name, Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. And his church is very. He goes to one of those churches that's like very anti, like everything. Oh, I. And think he I posts have about it, this. and he also only posts about his new child now, and not his son who has special needs. With um, what's her name? Um, yeah, who was he with first? Um, a, an actress. I knew he was get, catching some flack for the religious stuff, but I did not know about that other thing. Hmm. Yeah, he made a po people have been like, like Anna Ferris, people have been like commenting on his post, being like, What about your other child? Or like, 
<laughs> stuff like that. Like it's bad. Like I was like looking at his Instagram and I was like, well, he is making some weird posts. That's no good. He's but going down his, a bad path. His church is very anti LGBTQ. Yeah, so that's the part I had heard. Um, so Josh Brolin plays uh, Gurney. Okay, question three. Since it never rains on Arrakis, what do many of the native birds drink? Oh, oh. This one I don't know. I'm gonna guess sandworm so, excrement. So the options are blood, urine, or sandworm excrement, which I was gonna guess sandworm excrement too. Uh huh. Um, but it was oh, not. <laughs> dang, it was blood. It I almost blood. picked urine, but I guess that was gonna kinda... be my other choice. I would not think blood would have been it. So yeah. Hmm. Well, my bad. I don't, does it show that or are we just supposed to know? I don't. That's a good question. I don't know, I don't know because it, this also, the last question said upcoming adaptation. Yeah, I Dune. couldn't find any that were because the movie came out so recently. So I wonder if you're supposed to know that from the old movie or the book. Yeah. Oh, this next question mentions the novel. I didn't look at any of the questions because I didn't want to have this one was in the movie, though. You would okay. know this. One. Okay. Early in the original novel, Paul foils an attempt on his life. What weapon almost kills him? I'm yeah. supposed to know this. Yes, it's either a stone burner, a Chris knife, or a hunter seeker are the three options. Oh, I got it right. Okay. Okay. It was the hunter seeker. Yep. Yeah, I wasn't sure what they were called. Oh, I also yeah. thought that looked a lot cooler in the new movie than it did in the old one. Yeah. Okay. It was Question a lot smaller five. too. Yeah. Question five: Giant sandworms are unlikely steeds, yet the Fremen of Arrakis ride them all the time. How do they do it? So the um, options are with hypnosis, with hooks, or with parasails. They showed someone riding one. Yes, they did. I, oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> I got it right. Hooks. So. I was like, I don't remember seeing parasails, but maybe I just didn't see them. And right so before Dr. Kai's died, she had the two hooks out, like she was getting ready to ride it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I did know that. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Excessive consumption of the spice melange can, oh, this is easy, to uh, turn your eyes blue, give you functional wings, or diminish your sense of smell. Functional wings? Sign That'd be up. pretty cool. Yeah. I'd but like to is, fly. It is turn your eyes blue. For sure. Yeah. Question seven. The reigning emperor at the start of the original movie is Shaddam IV, who hails from which of these great houses? Oh, well, the options are House Atreides, House Carino, or Har House Harkonnen. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it's the middle one because because uh, the other two we know. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. It was House Carino, like we thought. Uh, yeah. What's the name of the full body moisture capturizing suits worn by desert savvy Fremen? So you've got still suits, gom jabbers, or <laughs> fadokin. Is that something from something else? Because that word sounds really familiar. I have no idea. Mm, still suits, though. So. Yeah, but it is still suits. Uh, plan planetologist Liet. Kynes describes the still suit as a high efficiency filter and heat exchange system. All right, question nine. The members of what well respected group function like human computers in this universe? Human computers. Oh. The guild navigators, the Bene Gesserit, or the Mentats? It's, well, it's not <sighs> the Bene Gesserit because those are the no. magic ladies. What was, because it's the guys with the weird thing on their lip, right? The weird guys oh. that had like no eyebrows in the first mm -hmm. one, they had like the red around their lips, but this one they just had the dot. Mm. I'm gonna take a shot. Me too. Okay, oh, I got it wrong. I got it. It was the Mentats. Man, you're gonna win because oh, I missed three yeah. questions. <laughs> uh, which longtime family servant betrays House Atreides? Oh. That one's easy. Wellington, you, yeah, it was either Duncan, Idaho, or who fear Hawat? I only got seven out of ten. I'm disappointed in myself. I got nine out of ten. But to be fair, I did miss some of the questions where you were also guessing. That's true. That Mentats one, I had a, a leaning, but I did not know that for sure. Um, but we're gonna do one more thing. Okay. Okay. But I knew all the rest of them. Yeah, we're gonna take a which a Buzzfeed. Um, which Dune character you're most like. And I used to do these quizzes on BuzzFeed all the time. I have not done one in years. Um, so for the first question, we are selecting a Dune. Um, there's just different pictures of Dunes. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'm going to pick this one. The second one, where would you want to live? There is like um, a desert. They're all <laughs> deserts, but some of them are like arches. 
Um, what, how would you live in an arch? I think it just wants to know like which scenery what, you would what like to view see. You would like. Yeah. And I know what the second one is. We almost went to it. I can't remember what it's called. Or I mean the fourth one. Uh choose a space view. Ooh. Oh. I love space. Ooh, that one has like a boat. Okay. Interesting. The fourth one, who do you prefer? Paul or Chani? I mean, I'm probably gonna pick Chani. Um, which dune planet would you want to live on? Arrakis, Caladan, Caladian, uh, Jedi Prime, or Catane? I, I, really, I don't know anything about the other ones, really, but, besides their, like, super industrial city, right? Yeah, I really liked the way they portrayed Caladian or whatever I in did this too. one. So I'm going to pick that one because it's really nature It's got, like, water and trees and stuff. Um, what would you want to be? A Fremen, an emperor, a lord, or a soldier? Wow. Um, well, a, not a soldier. I guess a lord? I mean, yeah, but that seems like a cushy question. Yeah, I don't like my who I got. <laughs> oh, really? I'm going to go with the Fremen because I wouldn't want to be emperor. <laughs> I got Johnny. <laughs> I got Paul. Oh my god, <laughs> we're switched roles. <laughs> people feel like they can connect to you even if they don't know you very well. Sometimes you feel like you're under a lot of pressure, but you have to give yourself more credit. You're smart and capable, friend. You know, I relate to that part. So, and Chani says, You're a brave person who knows how to make friends with just about anybody. You like exploring, and to be honest, you're a bit of a beautiful mystery. Wow, those are like the most basic things. <laughs> yeah. Do you think there were other characters that you could get? <laughs> Probably not. It only gave you the choice between Paul and Chani. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I guess it doesn't probably... necessarily mean anything. Like, maybe I got Paul because I picked Chani. I don't know. Um. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to answer drastically different than I would have. Okay. And I'll see if it gives me something else. Speed run, speed run, speed run. Um, we're going city. I'm going to be the emperor. Chani again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, here, I want to do it. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's just two people. I'm going to pick the first one. Um, the one with the weird thingy in the ground, the boat. Let's Ooh. see. I'm going I'm to pick Chani again because I want to see if that's going to change. Um, let's do Katine and let's do Soldier. Got Paul. <laughs> 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 it's got to be just the two of them. Wow. That's funny. Wow, wow. Hold on. I'm going to do those exact same answers, but I'm going to pick John or Paul instead. Okay, so first one, second one. <laughs> We're cracking this quiz, damn it. Boat, Paul, Katane, Soldier, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> but I picked that one. I picked Johnny and I got Johnny. Okay, so that's not based on that then. Mm hmm. But I'm convinced that there's only two two things you can Yeah, do. there's definitely there's definitely only two. I mean, there's they could have given you like Jessica or freaking Duncan. Duncan, yeah. Come on. Drax. <laughs> Drax, yeah. Come on. Um, right. yeah. Do you have anything else to throw in the bucket for this one? Um, I don't think so. It's been fun. Um, I guess we'll have to wait a while to review part two. Jeez. Yeah, two years. So we might not even be doing this anymore. <laughs> Such high hopes we have. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have anything to plug this time? Um, I don't think so. Oh, well, I mean, I'll just plug the new Call of Duty because I'm already having more fun than I did with Black Ops Cold War. I'm not. Yeah, Kendra's not quite there yet, but I, I, I got my need, first gold gun I just yesterday. need Modern Warfare. But it basically is Modern Warfare, just old school. I don't like it. It's on I the suck. same engine. I don't know. I have no hopes of finishing any camos. I got my STG gold. Oh, yeah. But it does seem like I'll be able to snipe a little bit more again, so at least there's that. Yeah, it, I've been already sniping a little bit, and it's so much better. I just need to, like, get some better attachments for the sniper rifles. Yeah. It's, it's a grind with any of those guns with no attachments. Just suck. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to plug my dice shop because I had a good opening day of updating, but I haven't sold anything in a while. Uh, you can find it at brokenbowdiceshop.com. And if you enter the code FALL25 at checkout, you get 25% off your purchase. 
Mm, there you go. Yeah. Deals. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's probably it for this one. I'm kind of tired of talking. I feel like I'm losing my voice a little bit. Yeah, and you probably got to talk a decent amount tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, oh, do you want to do the socials? Plug? Yeah. Yeah. I've done the last two in the wrong order and I don't like it. I usually start with the email. So you can Uh-oh. send us an email to five F I V E more minutes pod at gmail.com with questions, topic suggestions, feedback, marketing advice. Um, send us your resume, send us your LinkedIn, whatever, and just send us something. Um, and you can follow us on our socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at five, the number five M M P O D. And you can tweet about the show using hashtag five M M P O D. Uh, you can like, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, download our episodes, leave us a review, hit the share button, send us to your friends and family, your friends who are your family, your family who are more like friends, and family, nice. and um, have a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. And we'll catch you next time. Wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. This is going to be good, I'm sure. Wait for it. Uh, you, oh. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Very good. Bye. Bye.